While we were all enjoying our Christmas dinners this year, the guys over at NASA were busy launching the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST for short. The new telescope will revolutionize how we see the universe and what we're able to decipher about how we came to be. Today, we're discussing the next few weeks for the telescope and why they're set to be so crucial. So stay right where you are. First up, let's look at the history of the telescope. Built as a successor to the uber-successful Hubble telescope, the JWST, named after former NASA administrator James Webb, has been in design for more than two decades. Initially, the Hubble telescope didn't perform as first expected, so the idea of a larger and much colder infrared-sensitive telescope that could reach back in cosmic time to the birth of the first galaxies was born. And so was JWST. The goal of looking further back in time and having a telescope sit in a far colder orbit away from the infrared interference was something which simply could not be performed by Hubble. And NASA took on the job of building a newer space telescope with the capabilities of surviving in temperatures hundreds of degrees below zero degrees Celsius. NASA sped up the importance of a mission to study the birth of the galaxies, and crucial in this role would be a telescope powerful enough to look much further back in time. By the late 90s, NASA had created the Origins subcommittee, with the goal of turning the universe into a laboratory to study things like black holes and other phenomena. Initially, after talks with Lockheed Martin and others, it was thought the design would be completed and launched by 2007. But there were many delays, and it would ultimately take another 14 years to get the project off the ground, literally, and into orbit. The prime contract was eventually given the TRW, the tune of a cool $825 million. So why are the next few weeks so crucial for the JWST? Stay tuned to find out. So, as we know, NASA launched the long-awaited JWST on Christmas Day, which will eventually help us learn more about how the universe came into existence. The project, which is jointly funded and operated by NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, and the European Space Agency, passed its first major test on Jesus' birthday. But there are plenty more on the horizon. One of the most complicated mechanical designs designs ever attempted, the JWST has lots of movable parts and had to be folded to fit into the nose cone of the rocket, which carried it into orbit. For it to fully unravel itself in deep space, there will be 50 major deployments and another 178 release mechanisms. So to suggest the mission is complete now is quite a long way from the truth. Following the successful launch of the satellite, initial deployments included the solar array and gimbaled antenna, which were also a success. So there are reasons to be tentatively optimistic. The antenna will be used to send a data dump down to Earth twice daily. But the next big test, which began on December 28th, will be deployment of the sun shield. With its five-layer structure, each one roughly the size of a tennis court, this process won't be complete until January 3rd. If all goes to plan, the observatory should be fully up and running by the end of January and will sit in the Lagrange Point 2 orbit, around 930,000 miles from Earth. Whew, what else needs to be overcome? Let's see. So as we mentioned, there will be 50 deployments before the telescope is fully functional. But what next after the sun shield? In a video entitled 28 Days on the Edge, Web Missions Systems Engineer Mike Menzel details some of these deployments. He said, every single one of them must work. Unfolding web is hands down the most complicated spacecraft activity we've ever done. Sounds pretty intense, Mike. Once the sun shield has been deployed, the protective cover will be removed and its booms will also be extended shortly afterwards. Around a week after this, sun shield deployment will be fully complete. Around January 4th or 5th, the telescope will extend its secondary mirror, which will be hit by deep space protons on their way to the JWST's instruments. Once the secondary mirror is in place, it will then be time to deploy the main mirror on the telescope around 12 to 13 days after launch, which consists of 18 hexagonal segments. The main mirror, just like the sun shield, was launched in a folded state. Once the mirror's side wings are extended and locked in, this will give the go-ahead for the team to attempt final configuration. Two weeks after the main mirror is deployed, Webb will arrive at its final destination 
destination at the Lagrange Point 2, or L2 as it is also known. What will happen then? Stick around to find out. Even after this satellite is deployed and safely in orbit, there is still a fair way to go to ensure everything goes smoothly. As the telescope cools down following the successful deployment of the massive sun shield, the in-flight software will be initialized. Once this is successfully started, the team will then do the mid-course correction, which will set Webb off on course for its final destination of L2. The team will then have to ensure the integrated science instrument module is warmed sufficiently to combat condensation brought on by the intense cold in which the telescope will operate. If you thought this was all they had to do, then think again. The guys over at NASA will still have a long way to go. For example, around eight weeks after launch, they will have to undertake one of the most important tasks of aligning the micro segments on the JWST's mirror so that they act as a single light collecting surface. Even a few millimeters after out could be catastrophic for the results they are trying to collect. So this will be a painstaking job. For context, they will need to align them to within the width of about 100 times that of a pinhead. Would you fancy that task? One engineer on the project said, one of our scientists calculated that we move those mirrors literally slower than grass grows as we're lining them up so incredibly precisely. The team plans at the end of June to start regular scientific operations. Good luck, guys. Some SpaceX news coming out of China next. Stay with us. Recently, Elon's company caught some heat in China following a space traffic problem. The problem was down to two satellites launched by SpaceX, which Xi Jinping's government claimed had endangered Chinese astronauts. Oh dear. China complained to the UN after two of Musk's satellites flew too close to the Chinese space station, which forced the station to perform evasive maneuvers to avoid being hit. First world problems, am I right? China went on to claim that the satellites had constituted dangers to the life or health of astronauts who were aboard the space station at the time. Come on guys, space is truly massive. You can't figure out where other objects are before launching. Although this episode took place in October, it has only recently been brought to light and there has been considerable outrage throughout the world's most populous country. Musk's satellites aim to bring high-speed internet across the whole world, which will be nice. No more tortoise-like internet speeds. Some people in the still-secretive nation claimed that the satellites were a decoy and that America was actually trying to test the response and awareness of China's space team. Some people see conspiracies everywhere, right? What do you guys make of this incident? An honest mistake, or was there something more sinister going on behind Elon's launch? We love a good Elon conspiracy, right? More Musk news now with talk of a deadline for his Man on Mars mission. In what's been described as a worst case scenario, Elon himself has claimed that he can't see a situation where man is not on Mars within the next 10 years. He also claimed his best case scenario would be five years. So there is a lot to look forward to in the next decade if he is to be believed. Talking on the Lex Friedman podcast, who himself is a robotics expert, Musk claimed that the work would need to speed up if he was to hit his goal of five years. He said, Starship is the most complex and advanced rocket that's ever been made by humanity. It's a lot. It's really next level. Musk went on to claim that the biggest roadblock would be the cost of the mission. Good job. He's the richest guy on Earth then, right? He continued, The fundamental optimization of Starship is minimizing the cost per ton per orbit and ultimately cost per ton to the surface of Mars. This is actually the thing that needs to be optimized. Optimized. There is a certain cost to do the surface of Mars, where we can afford to establish a self-sustaining city, and then above that, we can afford to do it. Right now, you can fly to Mars for a trillion dollars. What do you make of Musk's plan to put a man on Mars? Or just his all-round Bond villain type persona? Let us know below. As always, thanks for joining us today, and remember to stop by next time for some more fun revelations. Why not share our video with any space heads you know of too? Bye, guys.